In this video, we're going to look at identifying and performing dilations, uh, which goes with section 9.7. Um, this lesson we have partially looked at in the similarity unit back in unit 6. Uh, we've looked at dilations, but we're going to look at them again this unit. Uh, but with respect to um, not only like shapes on a graph, but also off of a graph. So I think you'll see some repeat. Uh, at the beginning, I do have some vocabulary to refresh your memory with. Um, so I redefine dilation for you um, and then reduction and enlargement. So you might pause the video and then come back when you've written it down and then I will go over some details. So a reminder on a dilation, um, it is a reduction or enlargement, okay, which is what you know these two items here are defining. The other thing um, about a dilation is when you are looking at determining if it is a reduction or an enlargement, um, your scale factor is the big determination. Now I'm going to write over here to the side, we use the letter K to determine scale factor. Um, but if the K value is between zero and one, so like a half, a third, a fourth, it will shrink in size, so it's a reduction. Um, the second one looks like my one disappeared. If it's greater than one, then your scale factor would be like a two, a three, or 1.5, whatever. It's going to grow, so therefore we would call it an enlargement. Okay, um, if we look at this center portion here, so a dilation with center C and scale factor K will map every point P in a figure to a point P prime so that one of the following statements is true. If P is not the center point, let me back up. If P is not the center point C, then the, then the image of P prime lies on C ray CP. So let me actually back that up and look at the diagram. So um, what I want you to look at over here is this is considered my center, all right? So I also just want you to notice that you have triangle PQR right here. So there are no primes, this is your pre-image. And then you have an image, obviously it grew, so it's an enlargement. You have P prime, Q prime, and R prime. The black lines are showing you the distance from the center. So um, I am going to talk about this right here. So when I write my scale factor, I want, the numerator says C to P prime. I want the distance from C all the way out to P prime. So the distance to my image divided by the distance to my pre-image. Okay, so I always like to think of, I mean, you can think of that equation there, or I always, I like to think of it more as K is equal to new over original, okay, or image over pre-image, okay, maybe that's a better way to write it. Distance to image over distance to pre-image, okay, so if you keep that in mind, then you will be able to keep, always write your scale factor in the correct fashion. The other thing to look at is if this object is growing, I know my scale factor has to be greater than one or else it's shrinking. Okay, so um, that would be another thing to do. So you might just have your factor flipped over. Um, okay, a lot of this we've already talked about. It's a reduction if your scale factor is in between zero and one, enlargement greater than one. So I think if you remember, your scale factor is distance to new over distance to original, then you're going to write your scale factor in the correct order. All right, let's talk about that in these first two examples. Find the scale factor of the dilation, then tell whether it's a reduction or enlargement. I usually decide the second part first. So I would say that this is a, let's see, it's look for the pre-image to the image. So the pencil is growing in size. So this is an enlargement, okay? So I know my scale factor has to be bigger than one. So I want to do my scale factor. I'm gonna put here new over original, okay? And what I mean by that is the distance from the center to the new over the center to the original. So the 10 is showing you that the span from the center to the, or the new is 10 units. 
Okay, now the other span from C to the pre-image is this distance right here, which is indicated by six. Okay, and then the only other thing I probably want to do is just reduce this down. I want to leave it as a fraction versus a decimal. So I can divide both by two. So I can say that my scale factor is 5 thirds. Now, I need my scale factor, if I know it's growing, it's got to be bigger than one. Okay, so if we did 5 divided by 3, that's about 1.6 repeating, which is clearly bigger than 1. So if you, let's say you have it flipped upside down. Let's say you wrote 3, or let's say you wrote 6 over 10, which reduces to 3 over 5. Well, 3 divided by 5 is 0. 0.6. If your shape is growing in size, but you have a scale factor of 0. 0.6, that makes number, that would make it shrink. Okay, so then you know, okay, I just need to flip it over. All right, so it's, you, you kind of have, I wouldn't say you have a 50-50 chance, but you can always correct your mistake pretty easily. Okay, do part B, and then uh, pause the video, and then come back. Okay, so I see, here's my pre-image to my image. It's uh, shrinking in size. It's a reduction. Okay, so my k value needs to be new over original. So from the center to the new is 24 units. So I'm looking at the prime. From the center out to the pre-image is 40. So I would then just want to reduce this down. So that would be reduced, let's see, by a factor of, gosh, I think 8 will go into both. So 24 divided by 8 would be 3, and then 5. So 3 fifths does support a reduction because it's smaller than 1, in between 0 and 1. And so that would be my scale factor. Okay, let's, let's move on. Let's look at some um, reductions or enlargements or dilations that are on a coordinate plane. Find the scale factor of the dilation, then tell whether it's a reduction or enlargement. So again, I'm going to start with reduction or enlargement. So I'm focusing on, like for example, I see Z and Z prime. So the blue is the first one, the green is the new one. So clearly it grew in size. Okay, so this is an enlargement. So I know my factor has to be bigger than one. So I could look at distances, like the one we just did, like the distances from center to the image and pre-image are clearly outlined. But this is a little bit different, like I don't know the distance from the center to the pre-image. I mean, I could calculate it, but because I'm on a coordinate plane, I already kind of have some coordinates of distance. So I, if I look at the ordered pairs from any um, pre-image to an image, if I were to just put them in a ratio, then I could get my scale factor. Now, um, I am probably going to not choose Z prime, because see how it's not on a perfect coordinate? So can we find two coordinates that cross at a perfect spot? Like look at V right here, or V prime. I can tell exactly where that's crossing. Same with V. So I'm going to focus on those two. It needs to just be an image and a pre-image. So if I, this time I want to do ordered pairs. Okay, so let's go ahead and write down the, the two ordered pairs for V and V prime. So V is at negative 2, positive 2, and then count out V prime. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, negative 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, positive 5. Okay, so I still want to do, I still want to think about new over original. So my primes are my new. So I can just put into a ratio um, the x's and or the y's. Because let me show you why it doesn't matter. So if I first put into a ratio the um, new x, the original x. Okay, so if I do that, I have negative 5 over 2, which of course will, re oops, negative 2, which will reduce to positive. But also, look what happens if I do the y's. See how I get positive 5 over positive 2, which is exactly what I have. 
So my scale factor is five halves. Okay, I don't have to ratio the, I don't have to calculate the distance. Now, if I wanted to, I could. Like I could do distance formula. Shoot. Um, okay, hold on. I scrolled all the way to the top. So I could, if I wanted to, I could do distance formula. Okay, I could calculate the distance from the origin here, and I could then calculate this distance and put them in a ratio. But I'll accomplish the same thing by just looking at coordinates. Okay, try that on number two. Go ahead and pause and try that on part B. Okay, um, I am going to, I'm kind of looking here. So A to A prime. So my blue image is shrinking to the green. So this is a reduction. Okay, so A is our, uh, at coordinate. Here's my origin. So I'm at negative one, two, three, and then down one, two, three. So A prime is at negative two, negative two. So if I do new over original, um, the new is the negative two, the original is the negative three, and all I can really do is simplify the negatives. So a two-thirds factor does support a reduction, so that would be my scale factor. Okay, so that would be how I deal with determining scale factor on a coordinate plane. Simply look at the coordinates. Um, if you're off a coordinate plane, we want to look at the distance from the center, but by looking at the coordinates, it's really giving us the distance from the center because we're looking at that x, y. Okay, last couple of examples. So number two here, given A, B, C, D with the following points, draw a dilation with a scale factor of two. All right, so I am thinking to myself, factor of two. So if you think about a dilation, it's like if a factor is two, that means my new shape is twice as large. So what that means are, or what that means is the factors, or not the factors, the coordinates are twice as big as the original coordinates. Okay, so I want to basically take each ordered pair and apply a factor of times two to get my new ordered pairs. So if I go ahead at the bottom here and write out the new ordered pairs, I'm simply going to take my scale factor of 2, and I need to multiply every pre-image point by 2. So if I do that, I'm going to take negative 3 here and multiply by 2. My new ordered pair is going to be negative 6. And then go back, this, the y is 0, but when I do 0 times 2, I get 0. So a prime has grown into 6 comma 0. You just repeat that for all four ordered pairs. Okay, so B prime. Take negative 1 times 2 becomes negative 2. Take 4 times 2, we get 8. So each number gets applied a factor of 2. C prime, same thing. So 2 in the ordered pair times the factor of 2 is not 2, is 4. And then... Um, 1 here times 2 would make that 2. And then D prime, um, 3 times 2 is 6. And then negative 3 times 2 is now negative 6. So I'm just going to go ahead and draw the final image here, the dilation. So negative 6, 0, 3, 4, 5, 6. That's A prime. Negative 2, 8. Um, 4, 2, 3, 4. Now, if you really want to see it grow, you can also plot your first one. 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So D prime. Okay. So it's just a quadrilateral. Um, so if you want to plot the first one, you can, and you should see it growing. Basically, each coordinate is a factor of 2. Okay, you might try this last one on your own. Um, it's actually a composition of transformations. You are um, first translating and then doing a dilation. So you might pause and then come on back. 
Okay, um, I have an original triangle. Let's run through the translation, but I'm gonna just run through the math of my ordered pairs. And so what I mean by that is I'm just gonna take negative three and plug it in here. So a prime will be negative three plus three, that'll be a zero. And then if I plug two in here, two minus one is just one. Um, b prime, negative one plus three is gonna be positive two. And then positive 3 minus 1 is also 2. And then C prime. Um, negative 1 plus 3 is 2. 2 minus 1 is 1. Okay, and then um, now I'm going to take the red ordered pairs and I'm going to apply a factor of 3. So actually, let me scroll down just a little bit. I'm going to write these at the bottom. So I'm going to say a double prime. So I'm just going to multiply all of the red ordered pairs by 3. So a double prime would end up being 3, I'm sorry, 0 comma 3. b double prime would be 6 comma 6. c double prime would end up being 6 comma 3. Okay, and then we could graph it, all right? So I'm actually gonna stop there. So um, this would might this type of an example might be better served by actually doing what I did over here, going through your ordered pairs, and then you can run through and do the math on the ordered pairs here as well. And then of course we can graph it. Okay, well that wraps up dilations.